Good evening, everybody. So good evening. Uh, tonight is our boys basketball meeting for uh, the year 2020. And just like everything in the year 2020, um, things are ever changing. So uh, we're gonna begin sharp here at 7.30, hoping to keep this within an hour, um, hopefully close to the 45 minute mark. But um, you know, I appreciate everyone's time tonight and uh, willingness to be flexible starting at 7.30. Not that anyone cares, but my, my name hasn't changed to Robin. Um, this uh, Zoom account is actually my wife and her business partner. Um, we had to push it back to 7.30 because of uh, yoga class scheduling. So even in 2020, we're, we're getting rescheduled already. So um, I appreciate everybody's flexibility with being able to get here um, at 7.30. Um, and like I said, Coach Vale will be taking questions in chat. Uh, before we get going, and and I probably won't hit this throughout, but a couple of things over the line I want everybody to kind of keep in mind before we get started is, you know, thing number one, things are going to change throughout this season. They're probably changing right now, even from the information that I have, but I'm giving you the most up-to-date information I have. Be flexible, and we are going to do our very best to keep you all informed um, as quickly as we can. And we'll talk about our different forms of communication that we're going to use this season tonight. Um, we're also, I want everybody to remember, we're bound by certain decisions that are made up over our heads. So not to pass the buck, but, you know, I've got to do what Mr. Clark, our AD, tells me. He's got to do what Superintendent Belleville tells him. He's got to kind of go by what the, you know, Ed Board of Education says. They got to go by what the state says. They got to go by what. So everything is coming down, and we're trying to make the best of it as we can. But we, we are going to make the best of it. We are going to do what's best for our kids and, and our basketball program. And then finally, the final thing is I just don't want anyone to forget the fact that our goal is to have a season. You know, right now it looks like we are, and I don't see that changing. But, you know, as things may change and stuff may not be exactly how we want, don't forget the fact that we're going to get to have a season. And that that's the bottom line, and that's the goal. Okay, and that's what I just keep reminding myself is, Whatever, you know, rules, regulations, things they hand down, things that we think are no fun, that, that's all whatever it is. But at the end of the day, we do get to have a season. So just kind of keep that in mind. Okay, real quick, and this is for parents out there. I put this up here, very first thing. So uh, the first two items here are nothing new. Um, Up-to-date physical needs to be turned into the main office. That's a high school office. And if you're a middle school parent or if you got a middle school player, seventh, eighth grade player, those need to go to the high school office. Um, Andy Clark, our AD, he's keeping track of all our fiscals this year. So those need to go to him. Don't hand them to us as coaches. Those need to be in the office by the first day of practice. They also need to be registered online. So make sure you register online. If you go to the Fairfield Union website and go to the very bottom, it's under quick links. It'll say, um, I think, uh, student register or something like that. You click that and it's very straightforward to get them registered for a fall sport. And finally, this is a new one. Um, if you've played a fall sport, or if you've come to any of our basketball open gyms this fall, okay, just this fall, not the summer, but this fall, so a fall sport or a fall basketball thing, you've filled out this COVID waiver form already, okay? You've already filled that out. However, if you haven't come to a fall basketball workout or you haven't been in a fall sport, this is something you need to get from the main office and have filled out. It'll go, it, it's a couple sheets that tells parents exactly what precautions we're taking, what you need to do, and then you sign it, you have your kids sign it, and you can bring that with you the first day to practice. Okay? Um, after we make team selections, basic things to get done, pay to play, it's been the same as yours been, 50 for high school, 25 for middle school. We'll sign up for the concession stand. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. We are gonna have a couple fundraisers during the season. We'll talk about that later on. And the final item here, and this is a big one for parents, I always want to remind them this, there can't be any other basketball team or tryouts throughout the season. So, you know, if your son wants to participate in like a church 
uh, say a church basketball league and they're on our team, that they can be ruled ineligible for participating in another league outside of an Ohio High School Athletic Association uh, regulated team if they are on it. Okay, so just make sure that parents were careful with that. It, it's an easy thing to do, especially we get towards the end of the season, AAU tryouts, showcases, things of that nature. But when in doubt, make sure to ask us coaches. I always have this up here for our meeting. The whole idea of this meeting is to get everybody on track. Okay, our coaching staff for this year, and I believe we've got pretty much everybody in the room. But um, for those of you who know me, I already talked about I'm not Robin. I'm Coach Eversall. I'll be the varsity coach this year. Coach Vale will be our varsity assistant coach. Coach Helber, he'll be our JV coach. Coach Smith. And Coach Cooper Ryder, he'll be uh, will be our freshman coaches, and Coach LaFollette and Coach McNeil will be our uh, eighth grade and seventh grade coaches this year. Um, when it comes to questions, I always ask you to go directly to the coach, which your son's uh, part of the team for, but don't ever hesitate to contact me. I, I'm free to answer any questions seven through varsity, um, but normally the quicker, better answer comes from their coach. Okay, scheduling. Like I said at the very beginning of this thing, this is going to change. And we just all have to wrap our heads around the idea that change is going to happen. I could print out paper schedules, but I would be printing, you know, I'd be burning trees left and right. So we're not going to have a paper schedule this year because when I say likely to change, I'm telling you right now, it will change, okay? It's just the nature of the beast where we are this year. Here on the screen, if you take your phone and open um, Picture App, you're going to see that this QR code and that link, it's going to take you to a Google Doc, which I'm going to update weekly. So basically what you'll see right there is this week's schedule for varsity, JV, freshman, seventh, eighth grade. You'll see our meeting on there for tonight. You'll see our open gym tomorrow. You'll see our first day of practices, tryouts, which are on Friday. You'll see all of that. I'm going to have this QR code for um, our players at practice. This link is also on the Fairfield Union website, okay? But what I would encourage you as parents to do is get, take this link right now. You, like I said, you can do it through your cone, or I'm sorry, through your phone QR code, and then just copy paste that link to yourself in an email. Save it as one of your favorites um, because it's going to, be ever changing, okay? And we're more than happy to answer questions about it, but at the end of the day, um, players need to be up to date with the scheduling changes. And, I, and I'll speak to, again, here in a little bit, how we're going to communicate that besides just reminding after practice. A um, Couple quick notes about practice. Varsity and junior varsity will practice together for two hours. And uh, starting at the beginning of the season, it's always an additional half hour before or after where we condition, we lift weights, we watch film. So normally from about November through December, it's about two and a half hours every night. Um, but as we get into January, early February, we try to dial down the practice. We try to get it to down underneath a half hour, I'm sorry, an hour and a half, some days maybe even an hour, but we try to dial it back as we get longer into the season. Um, like it says there, JV Varsity will sometimes practice together. And then two things that you'll um, be notified of coming up here soon is concussion, concussion testing. That's just a baseline test. Um, our players sometimes will have to uh, renew, redo, um, just to get a baseline. So if they would ever um, sustain a head injury, uh, our trainer, Alex Crane, um, can do that baseline test and see, see where they're at as well as return to play, they use that as well. And then pictures as well, that will be um, to be announced, but that's not on there as of yet. One quick more item to note here with the schedule, you'll see it's an Excel sheet and you'll see that each week, I've got about four weeks scheduled out. Um, I will delete the weeks as they go. So always that first week up there will be the most up-to-date week. Okay, I've talked a little bit about communication and we're going to use two main forms of communication this year. In years past, we've communicated mainly by paper schedules. I'll send texts out to the players um, and the Twitter account we have. This year, we're going to shift that a little bit and our, I'm going to try to make our main forms of communication be either Twitter or the Remind app. 
Now, if you've never used Remind, what Remind is, is it's an app on your phone and um, you don't even really need to even download the app. I've got it. But basically what is going to happen here is if you decide you want to sign up for it, this is for players or parents. So players and parents, you can all be on this together. Parents, if you want to receive an email along with your son, you, right here below, you have the QR code. You have the link to go on there and sign up. I believe when you sign up, it's going to ask you whether you're a teacher or a student. Really doesn't matter. It doesn't give you more or less privileges. Um, but basically what it does for me is it gives me all of um, your contact info in a group. So let's say varsity practice changes. I don't have to go through my contacts and make sure I got everyone plugged in. I can just hit varsity basketball, type out the text message, send it, and it will come to your phone like a text message. So whether, like I said, whether you have the app or not, it will come to your phone and you're more than welcome to sign up um, using those QR codes and link below. So once again, if you would open your phone, and just scan it'll take you to where you need to sign up and it'll put you right in my group i don't have to do that it'll just do it automatically and then you'll be a uh, preview to any messages i send out in that group if at some point throughout the year you're like i didn't sign up for that i want to get in that just email me or um, message me it's a real quick easy sign up and it's going to be kind of how we do a lot of our communication when it comes to practice changes snow outs you know, sickness out, COVID outs, I don't know how you want to call it those, but that that's how we'll be updating that. We will send out a schedule weekly. So you're going to hear me a lot tonight talk about how we'll do things weekly, bus schedules, weekly schedules. You'll see that, and I'll show this to you on the next slide, each week I'll send out our practice schedule through Remind and also on Twitter. So once again, two here if you're a ninth grader, this one on the right, if you're a nine, or a, sorry, 10, 11, 12th grader, this one on the left. And if you're a ninth grader and you happen to eventually be playing JV or JV or varsity, you're up, I can move your contact over. It's not that big of a deal. So just do ninth grade right now so I know where to find you, and I'll move you and your parents over as the time comes. Okay, like I talked about, this will be something that's sent out weekly um, by Twitter and by the Remind app. So this is just off the Google Doc. It has our schedule for the high school, the middle school, and the activity center. You can see where those practices are located. I'll put a couple reminders on there. Um, seventh, eighth grade are blue, freshman are green, varsity is there. And then my uh, email and the Twitter handle as well. But that schedule, like I said, will go out. Sundays or Mondays weekly, and then changes from that, I'll communicate through Remind, Twitter, um, and texting if the case may be, okay? Now, uh, COVID, everybody's favorite topic. And, and I, I'm gonna try to do this quickly because there's obviously a lot, um, but I, I do wanna be hit a couple strong points, okay? First off, um, you know, when you sign that COVID waiver form, it talks about all the precautions that we are supposed to take as coaches and you're supposed to take as players. But a lot of it's just basic things that you've heard a lot of times from the CDC of washing hands, social distancing, wearing a mask. These things are non-negotiable. These things are an absolute must. If we don't do these, um, not only are we not allowed as coaches to, you know, let players skate outside these rules, but and I was told this by uh, Mr. Clark, our AD, out of our six home football games this fall, we had an OSHA, that's Ohio High School Athletic Association representative at four, grading our procedures on how well we were following social distancing, taking mat or wearing mask, all that. And at a certain point, if a school is not adhering to these, they, they have the ability to shut our program down, okay? As well as our uh, superintendent, like director so we got to be good with these and i've told players this already we've got to be really good in order for us to have a season first thing is mask coming or leaving practice gotta wear them so coming into practice wear them leaving practice gotta wear them um anytime we're not in a physical activity during practice so if you're putting your shoes on gotta have the mask on if i'm explaining something or we're going over scouting report or you're standing there gotta have a mask on so parents you're going to think, yeah, that's a lot of taking and
putting on a mask. It, it is. So what I suggest are a couple things. You are allowed to use the gator. So the thing that goes around your neck where you just pull it up, if that's comfortable for players, you're allowed to use that. Um, the other thing I would suggest is shorts with pockets in them. So, you know, we're doing drill, whatever. We stop, we have to do some teaching. Player can pull it out of his pocket and just put it on because we're not going to have time throughout practice to let players to go from court, run over to the bench area, pick it up, bring it back. You're going to have to think creatively about how, how do I get my mask on me on and off quickly. Okay, and that's different for every player. If you want to wear a mask the whole time throughout practice, by all means, that's fine. Us as coaches will have mask on the full time um, that we're, we're coaching. All right. Um, one other thing I do want to talk about. Um, actually, I'll come back to that when I talk about social distancing. Something just crossed my mind. Next thing is sign-in sheet. So parents, players need to take their temperature every day before, should be every day before school. That temperature is good if we practice right after school. But if it's an evening game or an evening practice, they need to take their temperature before they come to practice or before they come to a game. We also have a list of symptoms that we'll have listed out at practice that they'll have to say no, they don't have, which you know runs through the whole gamut, everything from coughing, sneezing, headache, muscle ache, and you'll see all those on the COVID waiver sheet. But we'll have to do this daily and for every game filled out. So please make sure that your son is taking their temperature beforehand and you're watching their symptoms co closely. Um, locker room will stagger changing. So players are allowed to change in the locker room, but we can't hang out in there, all right? We'll have a coach back in there to make sure we're moving in and out quickly, but it's really just a place to you know change, leave your stuff, get out of there so we're not in a close confined space. All clothes need to go home. And this is something that should really happen every year because we always have somebody that leaves some stinky socks or a practice jersey that turns into like cardboard. Um, uh, but it, yeah, but this is especially important this year. So all clothes, all cloth needs to go home. So ankle braces, socks, practice jersey, game jersey, everything, all that needs to go home. Now, players, if you want to leave your shoes in your locker, you can do that, or you know, if you got shoes that you wear into practice, leave practice, whatever, you can leave your shoes in there, but any cloth needs to go home. Social distancing will observe. You'll see during our games that benches aren't gonna look like normal. They're going to be spaced. We'll talk more about game procedures in a little bit. When we have our uh, huddles and practice, we'll be spaced. We're going to do our best throughout practice anytime that we're not actually engaging in a drill to keep space. Um, the other thing I want to mention about social distancing is parents, whether your son is a varsity player, JV player, or freshman player, we do a lot of traveling from either the gym up to the weight room, back down to the gym. And winter, you know, it's cold. Make sure your son dresses appropriately, okay? We, we got to make sure we take care of ourselves, not only with the COVID symptoms, but with other symptoms as well. We are not going to be allowed to let kids ride in cars with other people. Okay, and it's not an option if we're going to be a competitive basketball program not to go to the weight room. We've got to get in the weight room. That's a must. So we need your help to make sure they're wearing warm clothes. So when we move from one area to the next, if they don't have, they can't get in the car with one of their teammates, that's not social distancing. They've actually got to walk up to the weight room. So from the high school up past the football field up to the weight room, make sure they have warm clothes to do that. And especially after practice when they're sweaty, it's really important that they, they dress right and have some dry clothes. Players need to bring their own water. We're not going to be allowed to have them congregate at water fountains, and we're not allowed to have them congregate at water jugs. So we're going to, at the beginning of the year for Elise, JV, and Varsity, send home a water bottle. Freshmen, um, middle school uh, parents, make sure they're bringing their own water daily, okay? And then finally, the last thing there, if players miss practice because of a sickness, okay, or the symptoms develop, we're going to have to follow up with the school nurse. So obviously not every time someone gets sick, it is COVID. However, there's a wide array of different procedures when it comes to what do you need to do when these symptoms pop up? And, and I'm not a doctor and I'm not, 
I didn't even try to dive into it. Basically what Mr. Clark told me was, you have a player who has symptoms, we treat it as a case, not a COVID case, but a case of sickness. We take it to Carol Osborne, our school nurse. She tells us where to go from there, whether it's quarantine for so long, if they need a negative test, if they don't need a negative test, if they are free to go forward, whatever it is, but we're going to treat it on a day-to-day -day basis, okay? But please just make sure you're um, keeping up with those symptoms. Coach Vale, is there any questions or anything that you want to add in at this point? I know I'm kind of trying to. Nope. No, no, good, doing a good job. Okay, cool. All right, so let's talk about practices and tryouts, okay? So I already talked about you got to be registered and you got to have a physical in the office or you're not allowed to practice, okay? I'm gonna end up sending you home. We'll call mom and dad. You can't stay, you can't hang around. You gotta go home. So if you don't have a physical and you're not registered, you cannot practice. I can't drive that point home enough, okay? The next thing is we do have applications for all players who are interested in um, trying out. And those are going to be available um, I will try to get it in school tomorrow. I've got a PDF that I'll maybe have uh, Mrs. Throckmorton print out, but I will leave a stack tomorrow night after open gym that you can pick up and fill out players. And any player, senior through freshman, is going to have to fill one of these out. And basically what it does is it gives us as coaches information about yourself. So parents' email, your email, your height and weight, your what you've done this summer to prepare for this basketball season. Okay, and I'll get more into that in just a second. Our first day of tryouts or practice is October 30th. And obviously we have a, um, I'm not sure, I think it's a home football game. I'm not 100% sure. I've not been going to games, so I've not been as worried as when they're home. But we do have a football game that night. Um, so football guys will obviously not be at this first one. They will be at the next one the following day. And we do have two practices on Saturday. and We do expect them to come the very next practice they're available. Same goes for soccer players. So soccer players, you've got a tournament game here coming up. If you win and you continue, I won't hope you do. You're going to come to basketball as soon as your soccer run is over. Okay. I know it's tough, but that's part of being a multi-sport athlete is you've got to be able to transition, move into the next thing. And we've got a lot to cover and a little bit of time. And if one thing's for sure in the year 2020, no practice is guaranteed. So we can't say, take a few days off, we'll have all these practices. No, we, we have nothing guaranteed. So we've got to make sure that every day that we have available, we make the most of that. So just keep, um, you know, obviously I'll be following, um, you know, boys soccer. We'll be following you guys, but football, your first day will be October 31st. We'll start in the weight room that day. You'll see on the practice schedule at 1130. Everybody else who's not in football, soccer, and another fall sport that's still going, will be starting on October 30th at the high school at 3 in the, in the high school. Now, if you are a ninth grader, you will go from 7 to 9 that night. There is the possibility, depending upon – how our numbers look, we may ask certain players to come play or practice with JV and varsity, at least until we get all our guys there. But a lot of that depends on does soccer keep winning, um, you know, who is available, um, you know, who comes out, all of that. We, we really got to just kind of wait and see. Um, but the other thing I wanted to add there is in the case of if you are quarantined, okay, and I haven't heard anyone who is. But they have been, um, they did have some cases in the school district. If you are one of those people that come in contact and you got a quarantine, regardless of whether you're it's after a fall sport or after you're done quarantining, you're going to get a three-day evaluation, okay, or a three-practice evaluation. That's everybody across the board. And then we'll make our team selections for that person. As a large group, though, we should have most everybody by next week. And we're going to make team selections next week at some time. And every player will receive an exit interview. We'll talk about what they do well, what they don't do well, whether the role is on the team, if they made the team, if they didn't make the team, what they need to work on for next year, et cetera. And you see right above, these are the things that we look for. We will be doing grade checks. So first off, you got to be eligible. That's a no, no brainer. If you're not eligible, you know, can't, can't play. 
applications, we look at what you wrote on your applications, peer evaluation, conditioning evaluation, weightlifting evaluation, on court evaluation. So I want to talk to you, the players, real quick about these applications. And this is the back. These are kind of the final couple questions. And it says, uh, what are your individual goals for this season? How are you going to react this season if you don't play the amount of time you think you should or playing at the level you think you should? Describe what a coach should do if you're not giving 100%. Describe how you deal with criticism from a coach. The big thing with all of these is be honest. I'm not looking for specific answers. It's not a trick question that, ooh, that player answered it right, that one answered it wrong. We want to know what makes you tick when it comes to these things and where you are on the – because you know what? Some, some players are like, coach, it doesn't matter. As long as I get to play or as long as I'm part of the team, I could care less whether I play, don't play, so on. Some, some players will write, coach, I do not deal with criticism very well, da-da-da-da-da. When we understand that that's a part of something we need to work to get better at, all right? But the big thing is, is treat this like a work of application. This is part of the reason why I do it, is to get the players practice at filling out applications. So when you come and hand it in, this is your basketball application of the sport that you supposedly really like that you're going to spend a lot of time with. You hand me something that looks like this that's scribbled all over, it tells me a little bit about how much care you're going to give to, you know, this effort that you're about to make. Take care, make sure it's crisp, make sure you write neatly. These, it's crazy, but you know what? I've had to go through job applications before and it's amazing how you can sort through the ones that you know you don't want because just based upon that person just scribbled through this, they could care less, they didn't take their time. Write neatly, take time. Be honest, all right? Always my pitch to the players. Okay, practice and tryouts. And this is more um, both with parents and players, both. Uh, things to remember about selections. Number one, nothing set in stone. Number two, nothing's hurt by playing freshman JV varsity, okay? I, I've had juniors who have played JV that go on to play college basketball. I've had freshmen that their next year as a sophomore play varsity basketball. There's really no rhyme or reason or straight path to getting to be where you want to be. So you got to, as a player and parents as well, take it with a deep breath. And there's a lot of factors that go into this where we decide kids play. Overall skill, strength, mental maturity, position play to players' individual strengths and weaknesses, team strength and weaknesses, what they earned in practice. And the best bottom line is we're trying to fit the player into their best situation. So parents, you've got to understand, and players too, that just because one player can beat another player at one-on-one -on -one or is a, you know, better, at least, you know, on the outside as uh, polished skill-wise, that doesn't necessarily mean that that player needs to play ahead of that player. It, a lot depends on what the team needs are. What is that player's mental maturity? Because the last thing I want to do is I want to shove a kid into a situation where it's going to be tough for him to succeed and that hurts his confidence in it, you know, I don't think he's going to be able to succeed there. We want to put players where we know they can succeed. So players, if you're playing freshman, be the best freshman player you can be. If you're playing JV, be the best JV player you can be. If you're a varsity role player, be the best varsity role player you can be, and so on. And enjoy it, okay? So much of high school basketball, I feel players and parents both, you lose out on a lot of joy with the stress of, oh, I need to score this many points. So I need to get these looks at college, blah, 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 blah. The world's going to work itself out. If you just focus on what you can control and what you're focused on, your goals, everything else will work itself out. Don't, don't pay a mention. Don't pay any mind to all the stuff around. Stay focused on the things that matter. Coach, am I still doing good on questions? I always learn. We're good. Okay, good. Okay, game procedures, okay? And you'll see parents and players, this is a lot similar to practice, so I won't spend as much time. Mask, still, coming, leaving, and any time they're not on the floor. So if they're sitting on the bench, mask on. They go in the game, they can take the mask off. They come back to the bench, mask on. They will have to sign in every game. So if it's a home game, they'll have to come – and we'll designate a spot, maybe a coach's office, maybe the locker room. They'll have to come sign in with a coach. And then they will, at a home game, 
they will have an assigned seat, the short side of the bleachers. There'll be no spectators on the short side of the bleachers this year. That will be exclusively for players. So players, once you sign in, you'll come and you'll sit on those side of the bleachers and you'll have an assigned seat. And that's where you'll sit when your game's not going. So if you're going to come, you're a JV player, you're going to come and watch a freshman game. There's going to be a place for you to sit, social distance from your other teammates on those bleachers to watch that game. And then you can go back in the locker room. Coach will tell you when to change, get ready, play the game, so on. Okay. Same as going on the bus. We'll have to do the whole check-in thing, temperature, symptoms before the bus. And we'll have to turn in these sheets every day. Locker rooms, once again, we're going to try to stagger changing times. We know that pre-game, excuse me, excuse me, pre-game, halftime, end of game, we are going to be allowed to all be in there. Parents, we are going to do our best to keep them social distance and keep our talk short. Um, the big thing is social distance and short time together, but they will have their mask on the whole time that we are doing our pre-game, halftime, post-game stuff. Once again, all the cloth needs to go home. Players need to come, need to travel dressed, ready to play for away games. So I was told by uh, Mr. Clark that some away venues may or may not let us use the locker room. So we need to make a practice of dressing before we go to away games. Home games, we know we can change. Away games, we're not sure if we're going to change or what the school policy is going to be or what, where we're going to be allowed to go. So Varsity and JV, they have travel suits, which we'll have, we'll have our uniforms on underneath. So if need be, all we have to do is slip our shoes on, take off the warm-ups, and, and we're good to roll. Um, freshmen and middle school, you'll talk to your coaches. They'll likely have a – we'll have a, some sort of shooting shirt for you to wear. You can wear your own sweats um, to and from the games, but we got to come ready, ready to go without changing. Once again, the social distancing aspect, players need to bring their own water. Um, players cannot sit with their parents following the games, okay? And we're going to encourage this year, and it's a tough thing for me to say because I'm such a big believer on the importance of away games, traveling home together on the bus. But unfortunately, in this year with everything, we've got to try to keep the numbers as few as we can. We're going to encourage players if they want to go home after their JV game or after their varsity game with their parents to go ahead and do so, okay, to lessen our numbers on the bus. Um, but like I said, players can't sit with their parents following the game. So whether it's an away game or home game, they've got to sit in our area and stay with us, okay? So say your son plays for the freshman team and you want to stay and watch the JV game, that, that's fine, but he's going to have to go sit on our side with our guys staying social distance until you leave. Okay, we're, we can't have more players on the big side of the bleachers because it adds to our number of capacity. And if we have more players up there, it gets us closer to our number. We're not social distancing. We, we get dinged for that. So they've got to come and sit in their assigned seat following the games. Okay, Varsity games will be streamed on YouTube. So just like uh, I believe most varsity events this fall were, um, YouTube, and that will be tweeted out as games come. Each player is going to get two passes. So for each game, players allowed to invite two people to come watch them play. And normally, we you know suggest that be parents. It's going to be the player's responsibility to give us those names prior to the game, and that's going to be the next thing I talk about. So game passes. Coach Halber has been kind enough to kind of overwatch this with everybody. He's going to take care of our varsity JV freshmen. Like I said, each player gets two people to invite. And you must give this to coach by 8 p.m. the night before a game. After 8 p.m. the night before a game, we can't change it. It is what it is. So it's really important that players, you're detailed about this, and parents that I know some of your sons are not the most detail-oriented. If you've got to pin something to their shirt and send them to practice, do so, okay? Because we, we want to have the right names on the list so there's no confusion. But at the end of the day, that's going to be the main conduit when it comes to the pass list name. It's going to be the players bringing them to us as the coach. So whatever it is, if you've got to pen a note to their shirt or you trust them to give us the right names, we'll, we'll get those names on the list, and then those people will be allowed in. Um, coach Vale, anything I need to add with that? Any questions?
Well, I think the important part there is the pass doesn't get you into the game. It gets you the opportunity to buy a ticket to get into the game. And they're still going to make you pay for tickets. So a pass is just your opportunity to buy a ticket. Correct. Right. So you, when I say pass, that means you get the opportunity to buy a ticket. And I believe tickets are the same price. I'll, I'll have to check with that, but I don't believe there's any different cost with that. But yeah, just because your name, your name's on the list gives you the opportunity to buy that ticket. All right. So the next thing here, um, our game and scrimmage schedule, I put these up here, but once again, they're about worth the paper they're printed on. These are most certainly going to change in some way, shape, or form. Um, on the left is our um, varsity schedule, and our JVs are going to be at all of these. Um, for games, they'll have a 6 o'clock start. And over here is our freshman boys schedule. And I know it's small, but I tried to fit them all on one slide. As of now, most games will be triple headers, freshmen starting at 4.45, JV 6 p.m., varsity 7.30. Like I said, this is most likely going to change. The updated version will be on that Google Doc sheet that I told you weekly. You'll see that if you look through the weeks, you'll see our um, scrimmages. You'll see our scrimmages on there, and you'll also see our games as we get into games. But here is our basic schedule. If you want to take a quick photo of this, that's fine. But like I said, this is most certainly going to change as we move forward. But the big thing we want to remember is, is we're getting a season. We can't be picky about, you know, how, how it looks. Anything else to add there, Coach Bill? Uh, yeah, uh, the big thing there is um, make sure you see that first game there. I, I read through the schedule about 10 times before I noticed we have a game there in November, uh, the day before Thanksgiving. Uh, yes. Scheduled right now. So we yeah. do have a game there on the Wednesday uh, before Thanksgiving. Correct. Yeah, our first game is Wednesday the 25th, Big Walnut at home. Um, and then we won't have another game until that Tuesday, um, December 1st. And, and just while we're talking about it, I, I think, you know, basketball, we face a lot of struggles that fall sports uh, didn't face when it comes to the whole COVID thing. Obviously, you know, the winter, the cold, flu season, all that. But I also think, too, uh, the struggle is going to be over Thanksgiving and over Christmas break. Um, we, you need to be really careful about, um, you know, I'm not telling you not to see family. I'm going to see family. We all have our bubbles. We see family. But ju just be as careful as you can. And players, make sure you're washing your hands. And I, I know it, I may sound like Mother, you know, Mother Hubbard over here, but you know, you're at a family gathering, make sure you've got your, your glass, that you're not switching glasses, you know, simple little things like that are things that are so easy to spread stuff and just my two cents for that. Okay, we are going to have two fundraisers this season. So one is we're gonna have a free throw-a-thon. Um, if your son makes the team, varsity, JV, or freshman, they'll get paperwork coming home with them about this. And basically what it is, the 27th, we're going to shoot 100 free throws and parents, grandparents, uncles, businesses, whoever, they can donate a certain amount of money for each free throw made. If they want to do a flat donation, that's fine. Um, if they want to do, you know, a quarter for every made free throw or 10 cents for every made free throw, you know, whatever it is, we'll shoot our free throws the 27th. Players will go home with how many uh, they made with what people owe. They'll collect the checks, the cash. They'll bring it back that following Monday. And then um, that will be our free throw a -thon fundraiser. Pretty straightforward. Um, I'm never a big fan of just asking for donations, but unfortunately, because we've not had any, we didn't have any youth camp this year. We didn't have an OYB tournament. We didn't have a middle school shootout. All of these are big fundraisers that we just didn't get to have because of COVID. So we've got to think of creative ways to, to get the funds we need to have a, have a program that we, we want. Um, we will be looking for uh, sponsors this season, more information on that coming soon. Um, but if you have a business in mind that may be interested in sponsoring us, just keep that in the back of your mind. Like I said, the paperwork for that will be going out soon. Okay couple things to remember, and these are things that I stress to the players all the time. And this is actually just, I don't know if anyone cares, but 
when I first took this job in 2014, I think it was, this was like one of the very first slides that I showed the players when we were coming in and it hasn't changed at all. And this still stays true today is I, I want all of our players to have the priority straight. So family comes first. That's no ifs, ands, or buts. School, grades and conduct, that comes next. And then basketball comes third. And as long as we keep those in order of priorities, you know, we, we all get along fine. Now, we start throwing girlfriends ahead of basketball or, you know. Job. Yeah. Other things that aren't related to supporting a family or, you know, school that that's when we, we have issues. Okay, three things that we really wanna stress is number one, communicate, communicate, communicate. We can head off a lot of issues if we just communicate clearly and often, both as players, coaches, parents, let, let the communication flow. Coaches, we are here for you players, okay? We're here to make you guys the best version of yourselves possible. It may seem at times like we aren't on your side, but we are, okay? and it's tough because in order to get to places that you've never gone, you've got to be in uncomfortable positions and do things that you really just would never do without us. So we always try to push that line. Sometimes we step across it. We always retract, come back, but we're always trying to make yourself the best version of yourself that you can be. We are here for you. And then finally, the third thing is, and we stress this all the time, the how good we are as a basketball program comes with your work in the off season. Come October 30th, all the basketball teams around the state start practicing. We are going to kind of already be decided who we are as a team because everybody practices two hours from here on out. Basketball doesn't lie. The weight room don't lie. So don't come in and tell us that, hey, I've done this and this and this. Let your body, let your work, look your work at this game. Let that do the talking. And young players, you got to understand this. There are four things that we we require as an absolute must if you want to play varsity basketball. And this isn't to be a star. This is just to get on the court. You've got to be able to play with max effort. And we've already talked about with our guys this fall, to play with max effort, you've got to be in fantastic condition. So it's always a big, big uh, emphasis for us throughout practice to be in great condition. Got to be able to defend. Got to be able to rebound you got to be able to take care of the basketball, okay? Those four things were a must. So, you know, if you're a young kid and you're like, oh, I'm scoring all these points, freshman JV, if you can't do these four things, we can't have the conversation about you ever moving up. Player expectations, I'm not going to go through all these. These are in, I believe, um, when you register online, you have to read through them. Parents, players, you can read through this, but it's pretty straightforward. Basically, don't do anything that undermines the program, your family, your school. Think, act, speak respectfully. Make sure that we represent the school and our program the best possible. And just keep in mind that you are also um, fall under the code of conduct even when you're at basketball. Okay, so all that stuff applies. Obviously, drugs, alcohol, performance enhancing drugs has no place in our program. Even if you are in location where those are, you can still be um, still be punished just as if you were using those. So make sure you're keeping your nose clean away from those things. We know it's out there, um, but make sure to keep those away. Parent expectations, and and this was always a tough thing because parents, you know, I don't think I ever really understood this until I had kids. But you know, I I was I was told this a long time ago as a coach is the number one leading cause of blindness isn't glaucoma it's parenthood and i'm the number one you know because, you know i look at my son i look at my daughter and you know they do something so minute of they color in a line or you know they take their first two steps without falling over or shoot if they just are able to take a bath without chucking everything out in the bathtub we think oh my gosh this kid's gonna be the next president you know Keep in mind the expectations for your son and be realistic, okay? The goal for you as parents is to make the season be a positive experience, okay? Our goal is to make sure that we have the most success uh, possible, both as players and as a team. Your job is to make sure that it's a positive experience. A couple things, and I know it may sound like it, but at the end of the day, even though you as parents probably aren't big fans of us as coaches, 
at the end of the day, we're all on the same team. Okay. We're all on the same team. We're all fighting for the same thing. Don't forget that. Okay. A couple things. And I do want to talk through these because I do think these are important. Make sure to ask her, ask your son about practice. And, and I know the normal thing is, oh, it was okay. You know, press, ask, help them problem solve, encourage, hold them accountable. Don't let them make excuses. It's going to be tough. Okay, we have this talk a lot of times with players. Regardless if you're a junior becoming a senior, or a sophomore becoming a junior, or a freshman becoming a sophomore, or a eighth grader becoming a freshman, this is going to be the toughest year of basketball of your life. And we want it that way. We want it to be the most challenging, the hardest thing that you've done athletically because that's where you're going to become your best self. And parents, you've got to understand that, that that's what our goal is, is our goal is to try to make these kids the best version of themselves possible. It's going to be tough. There's going to be tough days. There are going to be times when things don't go well. Okay. And we need your positive encouragement to kind of keep them on track and keep chipping away. Okay. Don't compare your son to other players. Obviously, I think you guys have figured out, hopefully by this point in basketball, not everybody can shoot the ball 20 times a game. Right? It's not an equal opportunity position. Some players will shoot more than others. And everybody has a goal, and we're all aiming for success as a team. Okay, Just because your son isn't shooting as much as another kid doesn't mean that we don't believe in him, we don't think that he can shoot, or we don't want him to shoot. We just It's game plan. It's the way the teams are playing. It's a lot of other things. Relax and embrace what your son has done well. Try not to undermine the coach in front of your son. And this is an easy thing to do. Um, you know, I, I give a lot of credit to my parents because I had a very difficult coach in high school. Um, but I didn't find out until I was like 22 years old that they would spend hours up at night just, you know, berating my coach. But they never wanted me to hear it because they didn't want my experience to be soured. And it's something that I still thank them for this day. You know, no matter how frustrated you may be about your son's role or what we're doing as a program, don't undermine the coach in front of your son. It only sours the experience. Just don't do it, okay? Uh, don't berate refs at games. They're human beings trying their best, and trust me, I rip my hair out as much as probably you guys do, but the truth of the matter is referees, period, are getting harder and harder to come by. Good referees, exclamation point are really, really hard to come by. So we got to make sure that we do our job as both players, parents, coaches, fans, crowd, that we just don't berate these guys. They're really trying their best. They do a good job. And, um, you know, I know I'm not the best example of that. Sometimes I get pretty animated, but when you're in the fire sometimes, but I always make sure at the end of the game to tell the ref that I'm sorry, it was he the moment, et cetera. The next one, and I put this in bold because I think this is really important this year, and players, we're going to talk about this a lot, is don't coach your son from the stands. We want our players to focus on the task at hand. If he's worried about pleasing you or expectations you may have or he's looking up the stands, it's going to be really, really, really easy this year because guess what? There's only going to be like 300 people in this gym, period. So it's not like before, you know, moms and dads that you get upset with your son over – turn the ball over, you didn't defend well, and you stand up and want to like scream at him, it is going to be bright as day. It is going to be so easy to see and hear you. Just keep that in mind and try to check your emotions as you come in because we got to really focus on the task at hand. And if, you know, we're, we're dealing with, you know, different things pulling different ways, it's going to make that task even harder. Give your son space after games, win or lose. And I know this becomes harder, especially if you're driving your kid home. But try to, especially after tough losses, try to keep it light, keep confirmation short, conversation short. Next day approach is always best. And then finally, the last thing, please stress the value of communication to your son at all times. If he has issues with us, we are more than happy to discuss about whether it's playing time, you know, how we address certain things, et cetera. We're more than happy to address and we have these conversations often. Okay. But please please stress your son and try to come and communicate with us. I know we're getting close to 8.30 and I, I am going to get done by 8.30. So if I speed up here just a little bit, forgive me, but I wanna make sure we're done here by 8.30. Communication, if there's an issue, 
the athlete should always talk directly to the coaching staff. Once again, have their, have your son advocate for himself. Um, if there's an issue that you would like to meet directly with the coach about, that's perfectly fine. The only thing we request is parent, player, coach are all present at that meeting. So we don't have a conversation where it's just parent, parent and coach and saying, well, that's not what I told him. Well, that's what he told me, et cetera, et cetera. We get everybody in a room. We sit down, we talk about it, we hash it out, we come around with a solution. And if the parenting uh, communication, sorry, if a parent communicates an issue with the coach, we're gonna assume your son has knowledge that we're, we're speaking about it. So I've had a conversation in the past where parent talks and says, hey, don't talk to my son about this, but he's really upset about blah, 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 blah. I don't operate that way. I don't want our program to operate that way. I wanna be transparent. If you're communicating with me about something about your son, I'm gonna go talk to your son about it. Okay, I, I'm just not a good person when it comes to, I'm a lousy liar, so I don't lie, and I'm terrible at keeping secrets, so I don't try to keep secrets. I wanna go and address the problem straight up. Transportation, because of the confined bus schedule with Fairfield Union and other schools, bus transportation is going to be um, announced weekly. So when I send out that weekly schedule, it'll have the bus times and how we're doing it and who's traveling with who and all of that but that will be a weekly thing. And I know that's not very convenient, but that's just how we got a roll with it being 2020 with COVID. Everyone who doesn't get a parent ride home will ride home following the varsity game. You can sign out your son to ride home. If you want your son to ride home with another parent, you do need to uh, write a note, fill out a form with Mr. Clark, see him. If you want your son to travel home with another family. We don't encourage that obviously because of COVID, social distancing, but if that's you know a matter of there's just no other way, something's come up, please, please make sure you communicate with Mr. Clark. Okay, player equipment. I've listed out here everything we're going to give players once they make the team. Um, home uniform, top, bottoms, away, top, bottoms, shooting shirt, that's only for varsity. There'll be travel uh, pants and jackets for varsity and JV. Game day shirt, everyone will have, and we'll talk more about that moving forward, but that will be something that hopefully we get sponsored for us. Practice jersey, everyone will get. Everyone will get a game bag to bring their stuff to and from games, and we'll get, provide a water bottle, and that should say JV and varsity only. We'll provide a water bottle for them that has their name on it, and so they have something to bring water to and from practice. Players, uh, shoes, we don't do team shoes. Um, never been a big believer of it. However, we do need to have some you, 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 oh, what's the, what's the thing I'm looking Uniformity. for? Uniformity. Thank you, coach. Uniformity with it. Um, we, we just can't have like pink, you know, bright yellow, something outlandish. So anything basic like this is good. If you have questions about it as you're buying your shoes for the season, just text, you know, send me a picture, take a picture, send it to me. We'll give you a quick yay or nay, you can buy those shoes. Varsity players, we are going to require varsity players, as we have in past years, to have ankle braces for both practice and games. I know players, you don't like them, and I'm a big believer at, you know, playing without them. However, when it gets to the season, an ankle, a twisted ankle can make or break our season. We got to do our best to protect our ankles, especially in the sport of basketball. <laughs> Um, earning a varsity letter. So if your uh, son dressed with the varsity team every game throughout the season, whether they played zero minutes or they played all the minutes, if they dress with us every game, they get a varsity letter. If they play in three quarters of the varsity games, they get a letter. Okay, so even if they didn't dress at the beginning, we have injuries, something happens, they move up, they play, varsity letter. Meals. Players should make sure to eat a healthy meal before games. Parents, we really need your help with that. We've encouraged last year to do team meals. Obviously, this year it's probably not really doable. However, eating a healthy meal before games is not McDonald's. It's not Taco Bell. It's not, you know, pizza. Stuff. Yeah, pizza. It's something that's going to sustain their energy. So peanut butter and jelly, you know, carbohydrates, proteins. And there's plenty of literature on that that I can hook you guys up with. Um, if you have more questions about that. Players may want to pack snacks for away games for both before and after the game. Some nights it'll be very late. We do not plan on stopping, obviously, on the way home, COVID, as well as, you know, 
just getting home for the next school day or next practice. Game day attire, players will route, wear travel suits or game day shirt to games, but the big thing is we want to look uniform. Won't spend a lot of time on this, but we do, um, as coaches, we've dealt with plenty of players that have gone on to play college basketball. We've been very lucky in the past couple of years to have a lot of players uh, go on and to uh, college athletics. However, it's not the norm, okay? Players, I want you to understand only 3.4% of players everywhere play either Division I, Division II, or Division Three. And Division Three is no scholarships. Um, but the big thing is, AAU basketball is a key to the process, but be aware about, about what people are telling you, all right? The main thing is don't pay a bunch of money expecting to become a college recruit. You should never have to drop a bunch of money to become a college recruit. And there's some links down here about that, or if you have more questions about this for your son or players, you have more questions about that, let us know and we'll be happy to have those conversations. Okay, last big thing, and then we're gonna wrap this thing up. Concession stand, we are responsible for this year. Coach Vale is going to be our go-to contact person with that. We're going to have more information about exactly how many spots we need to fill and what games we need to fill and all that after the booster meeting um, Wednesday night. This is a big fundraiser for us and we need all parents to help. Once again, there'll be a sign up genius to come. Each night, we need two adults to cover each game, freshman JV varsity. We're dividing each night into three slots, freshman JV varsity, and we're asking each player's family to cover two slots. And there's examples right there, we can get more into that. But basically as a family, you cover two slots, you're good to go, okay? And like I said, Coach Vale will be communicating that. Oops, that'll be more to come um, shortly. Okay, if you're interested, we are looking for people to work uh, the game clock for home games. We are also looking for someone to work uh, the scorebook. I believe we have a freshman scorekeeper, but we're work looking for varsity and JV scorekeepers um, as well. Things to remember moving forward, and this is where we'll kind of wrap up for tonight, is communicate. You got questions, let us know. I'm more than available. Email, text message. Hopefully you signed up for that Remind app. That's how we'll communicate mostly. But encourage your son to communicate directly with us as well. Remember, uh, physical, register, and application before the first pet practice. Afterwards, pay to play. And parents, remember, no basketball leagues following making the team. We want to make this a positive experience for our young boys. And the big thing, like I said, whether it's you're a player that wants to be playing farther up, you want to be a college basketball player, you want to score more points, whatever, control the controllables. Focus on your world. You can control how hard you work. You can control how focused you are. You can control certain things about your world. Control those controllables. And then make sure to contact Coach Vale about the concession stand. He'll be in touch with you parents. And Coach Helber will be our contact as we get into home scrimmages and uh, games for uh, passes. And that is it. I wrapped up two minutes before an hour, so I'm really proud. If you have questions, stick around. I'm going to stop the recording, but we as coaches will hang around here for just a little bit, answer any questions. Parents, thanks for showing up. And like I said, if you have any questions moving forward, don't be afraid to ask. Coach, talk about Coach Green. Coach Green is, uh, he, he may, um, uh, Thomas Green is currently going through the vetting process. Um, he still needs to be approved by uh, the school and uh, okay. the Board of Education. So we're not sure if that's all going to go through yet, but he may be someone who joins our coaching staff. Um, moving